Thank you for gracing us with your presence despite COVID-19 and social distancing. We are glad that you are with us this evening. My name is Marla Newman Valentine and I'm the regional program coordinator at I Am. This fabulous celebration welcomes you. And tonight I am, I am. Welcome to our guests both in person but also online. We have a number of our guests that are live streaming, watching on Facebook and on Zoom. And we want to say to you that we are really, as a staff and as a team, honored to have you present here tonight. Tonight we celebrate a dream born out of pain and despair. A dream that became a reality in so many lives. A dream that gave birth to an embodied journey of hope. Hope that gave life to I am, the unlikely friend. To our online guests, please feel free to share your well wishes on the Zoom platform or, or on the Facebook page and use the hashtag I am at 25 for all your messages on social media. It is my pleasure and my honor to introduce two phenomenal women. Phenomenal women who are leaders and have stepped into a space of leadership at I am. I am's program manager, Michelle Buenzaya, and I am's director, Ecclesia de Lange. Michelle will focus on I am's vision and aspects of I am's praxis. And Ecclesia will focus on I am's impact, I am's positioning, and some of the highlights in the journey of I am. Please welcome Michelle and Ecclesia. So I'm going to start a timer on my phone and then I'm going to hand my phone to Marlo. Um, so Ecclesia asked me to um, say something about I am as an organization in three minutes. So last night Igor asks me, have you written your speech for tomorrow? And my response was, it's written, but I'm still looking for the right angle. And then this morning I wake up and I realize it's staring me in the face. Say something about a 25-year-old organization in three minutes or under. Challenge accepted, Ecclesia. So I'd like to focus on two things that makes I am the organization that we are. And the first thing is people. As well wishes have streamed in over the past weeks and days, words that were echoed, we stand on the shoulders of giants. Repeat it this morning in our board meeting. So as we celebrate 25 years, we are deeply aware of the fact that this is more than true for us. Peter, our founder, Judith, our previous director, your work will never, never be forgotten. We remember staff, partners, especially our regional partners, board members, funders, all people that share our vision and choose to be agents of transformation. Some of you are present here, some of you are out in the ether virtually, and some have gone before us. This brings me, oh goodness, am I at the right spot? Yes, blood say twee, don't count that Marlo. So these are all people that choose to be agents of transformation, and this brings to me to my second point. When people ask me what I do for a living, I usually say, I'm in the business of transformation. Changing hearts and minds in order to open doors. And this thing, open doors, hospitality, that is one of our core values at I am, and it's embedded into our organizational DNA. Along with this, we choose not only to facilitate and to accompany others towards transformation, but we also transform, we choose to transform ourselves. And this, this choice for transformation has never been an easy one for us as an organization because we do it both internally within our own bodies 
and our organization, and we also prompt others to do it on the outside. And it has never been easy. Not for those that who have left the organization, nor for those that remain right here. It has forced us to balance our core value of hospitality with a very real, very real intersections of sexual orientation, gender identity, and for the past five years, race, class, ability, and so much more. So we have learned some hard lessons. Some of the lessons that we've learned, it's not easy to choose courage over fear, learning over stagnation, and I've learned in the past 12 hours that the three-minute speeches really are possible. Thanks, Ecclesia. I really pray that this organization will continue to accept the challenge that we've always accepted over the past 25 years, to accept everything that comes our way, even making three-minute speeches, and to continue our own internal and external transformation as we continue to become our own core value, hospitality for all bodies. Thank you. And now, our director, the phenomenal Ecclesia de Lange. Good evening, everyone. Don't start the clock. Um, I can do it under four minutes, Michelle. Yes. What an incredible privilege to be part of this wonderful celebration. Our 25th anniversary speaks of the courage and tenacity of ordinary people making a difference in the lives of LGBTIQ, and I'm going to use an um, umbrella term, queer, in continuing my speech, um, in people living with HIV and faith communities in Africa. As we, or as I've looked back with the team, and in particular as we wrote the 25th report, um, I'd like to highlight some of the extraordinary uh, milestones that we've reached during this period. People, there are just too many, but uh, so I apologize if I leave someone's name out and uh, something that you might think that was a better, e Ecclesia should have chosen a different example, but here it goes. Um, tonight we celebrate Peter Oberholzer for responding to the call to establish a faith-based NGO in 1995. What a bizarre thought. At the dawn of our, young, at, of our young democracy, Peter was determined to get the message of sexuality and faith on the agenda of the churches. We celebrate, as Michelle said, Judith Kotsia, Kotsa, who joined Peter on his quest, and Ingrid Squinrod, who joined the team when I am convened the first African dialogue on Christian faith and sexuality in 2009. This was the start of us, I am expanding into the region. We celebrate Balawa Panda, who managed the Itemba Lam Shelter, where vulnerable queer people from all over Africa were hosted. I don't know if you know this one, but I am was central to the efforts to lobby in clergy and lay leaders in the support of the South African Civil Union that was passed in 2006. We've created many resources that have been developed to support queer people of faith, and we believe that saved lives on this journey. We created safe spaces for queer individuals, their parents, their friends, their families, who could not find room in their churches. We hosted the first queer clergy think tank, or tanks, the one in 2015 and 2017. I am played a significant role, direct and indirect, in persuading the Dutch Reformed Church and the Methodist Church of Southern Africa to change their policies about the inclusion of queer people. This and much more was made possible due to the efforts of I am staff, our partnerships with donors, academia, faith communities, civil society, individual supporters, our spouses, and our partners. Without you, we could not have reached these milestones. I thank you. When we contemplate about the future, we have to recognize that 2020 was a curveball when the pandemic hit um, our shores. The situation tested our mental capacity 
our innovation, our adaptability, our resilience, and openness to learn new skills. We will continue to build on the accomplishments of the past 25 years. We are committed to integrate our programmatic work to ensure that we sustain and grow the gains that we have made as a collective. We are committed to making our work more accessible. We will expand our reach further, for example, expanding our involvement with schools regarding comprehensive sexuality education from a faith perspective. And we will look after our staff, our most valuable component. In the words of Brene Brown, one day you will tell your story of how you've overcome what you went through and it will be someone else's survival guide. My prayer is that this will be true for I am. In conclusion, I would like to thank everyone for the part you've played in the life of I am and for all who have made this event, this celebration, Abby, possible. Thank you for your hard work and your dedication. Thank you for I am's team, a commitment of our current team. Um, but most of all, I thank God for her amazing grace. Uh, the basis of the work that I started and for the first uh, seven to ten years I was a man alone project uh, with here and there a consultant who worked part-time. The basis of our project is very much with Dr. Martha Luton King's words, if you want to change people's attitudes, start at their hearts. Laws don't change hearts and minds. Um, it, don't, it doesn't change societal attitudes. And this is where I am is so crucial. To put it in one sentence, it would be, I am helps the church be the church. I am helps the church actually be the church. The church is called to be an inclusive and affirming community. We had various engagements with, with I am, with free gender, with the inner circle, with, um, and with some activists from the sector. With the tri Triangle Project was involved at the beginning. Um, we spoke, uh, we involved the Gay and Lesbians um, Coalition in Zimbabwe, from Zimbabwe they came, and the Women's Leadership Center from, from Namibia, they also came. And um, so we, we, we started a series of conversations. Sometimes there are big gains, like the religious leaders that supported Le Habibo in their court case for decriminalization. But sometimes there are those small gains that affect us so deeply because my personal space becomes safer. You cannot do transformational work unless you've done the work on yourself, the internal work. So the internal journey for me has been very personal and very existential. South Africa being a very religious society um, need a lot of guidance how to make meaning of these ancient texts so that the ancient texts cannot be used as tools to discriminate against people. It is to go into that site of struggle that I'm comfortable, vulnerable and courageously say, I have found a way to journey towards inclusion and affirmation and I want to participate and hold the option for you also. So it's not just about me, it's about us, it's about the body of Christ. How do we as sexually and gender diverse people then contribute to our own um, liberation on this continent and I think I am's methodology and theory of action makes a particular contribution in that regard for something new and different and something that comes from a place of our lived experiences which is not only imported from the global north but it comes from Africa for our own continent. Traditional communities accepted people from the LGBTI community without any questions. 
Um, but when the missionaries came, they moralized the whole issue of sex and sexuality. So what we are trying to do in our work together with IM is to liberate sexuality. When you talk about the advancement of LGBTQ rights, you can't do so really without talking about religion and faith. Um, religion has really been weaponized uh, for uh, colonial and political control, and it's been used as a vehicle uh, to um, legitimize anti-LGBTQ hate and resist uh, recognition of rights. Um, it is the most prominent visible opposition, and I think that is why IAM's work is so instrumental in the fight for liberation for queer communities. The Robert Carr Fund, we understand the importance of opening up uh, civil spaces and um, the continued challenges that the community and organisations face in doing so. Accompanying our regional partners and building the, their capacity uh, through the Trainers of Trainers annual workshop has um, had a tremendous impact where we could share our ideas, share our uh, theory of action, um, where they could take it, uh, contextualize it, and utilize it within their country context to respond to, to matters uh, relating to LGBTQ people of faith and assist within that context. In 2018, there was a young trans woman in Malawi and she was from an informal settlement not too far from the heart of the city. And on one particular Friday, the people who had always tolerated her decided that they were going to attack her. And she ran. And the only place that she could run to was the police station. Uh, and she, luckily, neighbors told her mother what had happened. Now the police, in their own way, weren't the best to take care of her because they were equally abusive but at least they locked her in a cell which offered her some protection. The only person that could defuse that situation was the local pastor. And then of course it was wonderful to learn that that local pastor had gone through three, two, three years of intense training, understanding the, the rights, the inclusion, the importance of LGBTI people. Norms, traditions and belief systems that, uh, that focus on a, a binary of the genders and deny those that fall outside of those norms, uh, deny them the basic rights to um, even to exist in the context of South Africa. As a transgender man, um, of course, you know, some people go through that journey where they interrogate the identity, interrogate what the Bible says. But since working with I am, I've realized that the Bible doesn't say anything, it's the human being that speaks. And how you then speak to that contextually and including minorities within the space is what I am does. The work that I am has done has created pockets of safe spaces in communities in both local, urban and rural, but also regional um, pockets of inclusion. Um, vanuit ek uh, by AM aangesluit het in 2013, kan ek sien dat die organisatie geweldig gegroeid het um, en wat eerst beskou was as een halfdag post, het nou een uitdagende voltijdse werk geworden. Just seeing practically how the world is changing towards queer people, um, it is evident that the work that they are putting in is definitely showing. I think the work has been incredibly brave. Uh, the image that comes to mind when I think of I Am and the people that I've met in and through I Am are, the, the one word is brave or courageous. And I think the biggest impact that I've seen is the effect that it has on other people, on parents, friends, colleagues, the work that they do, the knowledge that they are imparting to other people. Let's allow people to live life in abundance. It is a transformative thing. It, it allows you to think outside of the box, as it were. And so let us use our own pulpits to become to say to people, you'll never know. Maybe the person you're living with is actually bisexual, but you are not aware of that. What I'm wanting for the next 25 years as a vision is that we will go deeper into the radical inclusion. I really hope that 
within our organization, we will continue to be able to shape shift. That our work will always be about the heart and that the heartbeat that we feel will be felt in the work that we do and when we have conversations is that it will be connected one person to the other person, one heart to the other heart. O impacto do, da I am é conectar espíritos, conectar corações e conectar comunidades. No man is an island. We reach this milestone because of the commitment and dedication of I am's previous and current staff, all the consultants that have joined us on this road and the board members that have joined us on this journey over the years. The commitment of our regional partners, our faith partners, our academic partners, and our donors, as well as all I am's friends, have made this possible. It is with deep appreciation that we say thank you for your generosity and your support over the years. Thank you. Our hope is also that I am is not only working with churches in Africa, but elsewhere in the Netherlands, but also maybe in Asia and Latin America, because I am has a lot to um, share uh, with uh, the worldwide uh, church. Uh, congratulations. God bless you all. Vanuit Nederland steunen wij samen met de Nederlandse donateurs via de stichting Bijzonder Pastoraat Kaapstad het zinvolle en noodzakelijke werk van IAM in Zuid-Afrika. Wij zien het werk van IAM als een teken van hoop en verbinding. Wij feliciteren jullie van harte met het 25-jarig jubileum. Wij hopen dat IAM over 10 jaar geen 35-jarig jubileum hoeft te vieren, omdat dan acceptatie, inclusiviteit en bevestiging van de LGBTIQ plus medemens in geloofsgemeenschappen en maatschappij een feit zal zijn. Congratulations to everyone at Inclusive and Affirming Ministries on your 25th anniversary. We are so thrilled to be a partner with you from the very beginning when Pastor Peter visited St. Francis in 1995. Your expansion of your work, your programs that have grown, your amazing staff who have reached out across denominations and built relationships, you've changed hearts and minds and opened people's spirits to LGBTQIA plus people all throughout Southern Africa. I wish I am to be able to continue doing the work that they're doing with the continued humility and compassion which the organization carries itself with. I want to give a big warm congratulations and happy anniversary to everybody at I am. For the next 25 years, we hope to expand and deepen our reach further through developing our schools project, empowering youth, and advancing and deepening our collaborative faith partnerships and our collaborative intersectional community partnerships, meaning our programmatic work. And most importantly, I would think that we would commit to build on the tremendous work that we've accomplished over the last 25 years. And we will remain true to ourselves, our mission, and we will explore what is next. Um, and we will embrace new opportunities. We aim to bring sustainable transformation to all areas of our world. I am Peter Oberholzer. I am Siabulela Gedi. I am Judith Kotsia. I am Bandi Puri. I am Alan Story. I am Grace Van Gautana. I am Abigail. I am Ecclesia de Lange. I am Nocturne Lamjasa. I am Hanston Davids. I am Marlon Lily Valentine. I am Tashwa Esterazen. And I am, I am. 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 Hi, I am. We should. Oh. <laughs>
So it is my privilege and my pleasure to um, introduce a board member, um, Pumzili, who will be proposing the toast to the next 25 years in the life of I Am. Thank you very much, Malo, for those beautiful words. Um, you, you're very kind. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am so happy. I don't even know how to start. Um, as you have been instructed to fill up your glasses, I'm going to invite you to just lift them up in celebration of the 25 years. Um, I just realized when the creative team took us through the video, it brought back memories when we and Peter and Bulelwa were trying to, to, um, to reach out to the LGBTIQ persons in, in the townships of Cape Town. Those days were difficult, but look at where we are now. So, to the tenacity of I am, cheers. Uh, to, to striving for justice, cheers. And for blessings and continuing to change the narrative of our faith communities and blessings to I am and diplomacy and all blessings and words and I don't know what else to say. As we reach out, cheers. Thank you Pumzile for that toast on the life and the times and the legacy in the future of I am. We are now at the close end of our formalities. Please know that there are drinks, there's canapes, there's food, and we would like to invite you to still remain and to linger with us and celebrate with us. Um, I do want to say thank you to the organizing committee and staff that put this fabulous event together. Thank you, Abby, for heading up the team. It's fabulous. And also to the technical team, headed by Enzio and his, and, and his team. A huge shout out to our entertainment this evening, the fabulous Miss Candace Thornton and her team that will entertain us for the rest of the evening. Um, please ensure that you get your thank you gift before you leave this evening, um, I understand that Ms. Tuli is in, cho in charge of the thank you gifts. You cannot leave tonight without your thank you gift. And Ms. Tuli, in a fabulous ensemble, will grace you with your gift. Um, we also have a photo booth. I am 25 years celebration. Please feel free to use the photo booth and to um, share it on, 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 on our social media. Enjoy the, f the, the festivities. And also, be safe when you travel home this evening. Thank you so much. <laughs>